Hello, friends, and welcome to an episode that's going to be rated R for Restricted Free Agent. We're going to talk about some great RFAs that Winnipeg might consider trying to pry out from some of these teams. Not all of these RFAs are going to be avail available on the market, but a few of them have been floated about in trade rumors. And let's be honest, if the Jets are serious about competing in the next couple of years, they need to make a few roster tweaks. We'll take a look at which of these guys might be qualified to make the Jets roster and uh, potentially the kinds of packages these teams might be commanding on the market. We'll talk about that and give you an update on the Western Conference Finals, all coming right up on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. For Locked On the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you enjoy what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. We've got audio and video versions of this podcast available every day of the week, 24-7, to keep you in the loop on the latest happenings around the league, and specifically around the Winnipeg Jets. So again, drop us a follow. We really love and appreciate your support. On tonight's episode, I thought it would be fun to return back to um, our, our free agent list. Uh, I might talk about some unrestricted free agents, but one status that I haven't talked about uh, are RFAs. And RFAs obviously have a little bit more complication because you need to trade for the rights. Um, and oftentimes when you're dealing with RFAs, uh, it can be difficult to get some of them to sign, especially if they're not happy. But, you know, by the same token, RFAs also don't really have uh, as much contract control. And they certainly do struggle to, uh, you know, get themselves out of situations that they don't really enjoy. Sometimes you'll see guys take really short term contracts to get through to uh, unrestricted free agency. I believe that's age 25 or 26. Um, and after that, you know, suddenly the market opens up and you can kind of chart your own course. But uh, in the case of some of the RFAs that we've got coming up this year, uh, there are some very good free agents that the Jets might really take a look at. One of them I've talked about before. Um, obviously, this guy, I, I think for me, is one of my favorite underrated players. This is Brock Besser. Besser just seemingly has this ability to naturally help out a line's shooting percentage. And, you know, he does it with break-even shot impacts. He's got a great release. Uh, he's actually pretty defensively responsible. I wouldn't say that his total on ice impact is anything to be, you know, blown away by, but you're looking at a really well rounded two way forward with a great shot. And if you're getting a guy who can pot 20, 30, maybe even 40 goals in a much better scenario or system uh, and a more supportive environment, you know, all while posting around break even shot metrics in both offensive and defensive impacts, I mean, you're basically getting like an absolute bona fide stud. Uh, the reality is most snipers out there tend to be not exactly great when it comes to, um, you know, the, the, the sorts of trade-offs that you have. Like Kyle Connor, I think, is a wonderful example. This year, KFC kind of supplanted uh, a lot of his defensive deficiencies with just a ridiculous amount of individual offensive creation. But previous years, we couldn't really say that. Brock is a little more well-balanced, and I think that that balance is really crucial to making him uh, a really attractive option. Now, he's currently making just under six mil. I would imagine that a future extension with him probably uh, is going to clock in somewhere between six and seven. I don't know if he really has that kind of negotiating power. I feel like, you know, based on the past couple of seasons, the injury risk, I kind of look at like a five and a half range to be more in what I would feel comfortable paying him. Uh, I do think that he can be a like a very good uh, top six forward. I don't know though, if his shoulder is, is you know, going to ever be the same as it was. Uh, obviously, he's had some pretty serious upper body injuries. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do expect that he'll make a pretty sizable jump in, in cash. Probably his next contract is going to be like, I don't know, 6.5, I would say. And if the Jets were interested in acquiring him, um, 
Obviously, they'd have to give up some, some pretty serious futures. This is probably the time when you start talking about trading guys like Billy Heinola. Uh, as much as I very much like Heinola, uh, if, the, if the Jets don't really intend to play him and he doesn't have a future with Winnipeg, uh, I don't really want him to stay around and basically waste away. Um, unfortunately, with this, this Jets team, you know, we have a lot of prospects who need spots. And sometimes it feels like, you know, if if the Canucks really want to, you know, move Besser, I would say the Jets should make a move and, and use some of their assets that they don't have planned in their future. Now, I don't feel Heinle is actually the kind of guy who's going to get frozen out. I do think sometime in the next season or two, he's going to become a mainstay. And I, I think it might even happen um, this upcoming season. So I don't know if I would be really down to move him for Besser necessarily. Um I do think it would be the kind of package though that it would take. And certainly I like if there's a reasonable deal to be made for Besser and you've got a contract extension lined up that's within reason, you know, five to six years, uh, I would definitely be in for removing Heinola and some assets for that that kind of deal. But um otherwise, you know, he his situation will be one to monitor if it kind of gets to brass tax and suddenly Vancouver finds it can't extend him, you know, yeah. See what you can do. I, I think that there are going to be some teams desperate to dump some of their RFAs, uh, you know, either because they're about to get a massive extension and they can't really afford it, or, you know, there's just a relationship rupture. Matthew Tuchuk is probably one of the best examples. Uh, Matt just dropped a 104 point season, and he is definitely in line for like an eight and a half to nine million, maybe even nine and a half million dollar deal, which you know, for a team like Calgary, it's it's kind of breaking the bank, especially when you've got Goudreau also do. Now, to Chuck, I would I would kill for, but I, I don't really feel uh, that Calgary is going to be interested in anything the Jets could offer that wouldn't basically cripple the Jets. Um, I actually don't even know where to Chuck is going to end up because there aren't that many teams that can frankly fit him on their team uh, without, again, kind of sacking Constantinople to get uh, his name down on their roster. I think that you would have to give up an extraordinary package uh, for for Tuchuk. And I, I do think, you know, at the end of the day, it would be worth it. It's just, you know, you're going to have to really raid the prospect cupboards and probably send some bona fide NHLers back the other way, too. So, yeah, Tuchuk, I, I think, would be a very dreamlike scenario. But if the Jets, for instance, were looking to trade Shifley and some futures, that would be the kind of deal I would be interested in. Um, but, you know, that's like a really out there scenario. I can't imagine that the Jets are really interested in trading Shifley. Um, more than likely, it's going to be somebody like Pierre-Luc Dubois plus uh, assets if you were to target somebody like Tuchuk. I don't really know that that's necessarily an even trade. Uh, I, I do believe in Dubois' potential to be a monster center. And honestly, I could easily see him hitting 90, 100 points with Calgary. But, you know, as it is, he didn't really have that kind of season for the Jets. So, yeah, an interesting one. I, I think any team that trades for Tuchuk is both going to win and lose. For the Jets, I feel like they would just have to give up too much. And to be honest, I don't think Winnipeg really has enough that's interesting. So, uh, dreamlike scenario, I think Besser is a more realistic target for me. Um, Brock, you know, obviously has had the injury history, but I, I think he fits a profile of the kind of player I would be very hot to trot for. And I, I think the Jets could swing a deal within a reasonable price range. Uh, you know, the first, uh, some prospects, some other picks, um, you can kind of make a package around the first, uh, unless maybe you can even get Vancouver backed in a corner. I can't imagine that that's going to make a lot of sense though, because I think a lot of teams would be competing for Brock's, uh, the trading rights. So yeah, I, I would imagine the jets are going to have to pay up. And honestly, you know, I'm all for that. I, I do think, uh, you know, the fan in me doesn't want my team to overpay, but also for me, I'm always into organizations getting at least decent value. So um, it's kind of how I view like international football and stuff. Not so much with the NHL, but uh, I, I do think the Jets should be willing to spend a bit. Uh, and, and really, if they can get Besser in, I'd be thrilled. But he's not the only uh, RFA out there that I think is really worth Winnipeg's time and attention. There are a couple of other ones that I want to talk about. Some of these guys uh, most likely are going to resign with their teams, but if the Jets can pry one or two of them out, I would be 
beyond down for that, to be honest. Uh, and we'll talk about who those guys are in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our wonderful partners at Bet Online. They are your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. They have all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. If you're not into those, no problem. They've also got a lot of other wonderful sports, including international football. They've got F1, NASCAR. Whatever sport you're into, they've got you covered. And if you're not into sports, no problem. They've also got Vegas casino games. So really, all your bases are covered. Not MLB style, though. BetOnline is a continued source for all of your sporting wagering information as well, including live betting, esports, and so much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the latest trends and action. BetOnline. It's where the game starts. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day, every day. We are talking about some restricted free agents. Uh, These free agents are a little bit more complicated because you have to trade for their rights, and uh, some of them are going to be looking for pretty big paydays. But before we talk about a few other targets that I think the Jets should maybe be considering, I did have a huge favor to ask of you. A lot of you have been listening to this podcast for a while now, and... uh, We've actually started thinking about getting some feedback and trying to find ways to improve our show. So we've come up with a handy dandy, really quick little survey that we're looking for all of y'all to fill out. Uh, You can find the survey at LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. It's really short. And once you complete it, you get entered to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. I don't know about you, but knowing how expensive concerts and, you know, Winnipeg Jets games are, a Ticketmaster gift card for just giving some thoughts on a podcast really couldn't be easier. Give us some feedback and we'll help, you know, it'll help us shape the content that you want to hear about and see, and uh, also give us some ideas for future episodes. So again, drop off your feedback at lockedonpodcasts.com slash survey right now. Really love and appreciate your feedback. Now, like I said, I wanted to talk about some restricted free agents. We talked about Besser. I talked about the Chuck. Uh, the Chuck is definitely dreamland. Besser, more in the more in the reasonable range that I think the Jets could afford. If there's an interesting name that I definitely um, have circled back to a few times, though, it's Dylan Strom. Strom uh, with Chicago, you know, he's kind of at the age where I, I think Chicago doesn't really want to build around a player like him. And honestly, he's more of an offensive complementary piece than he is like the linchpin of some team's offense. That said, I think Strom is awesome at what he does. Uh, he's kind of like a less effective Mark Shifley. Uh, his style, I think, for a lot of people is kind of awkward to look at. Uh, it's not exactly the world's most elegant offensive scoring output, but I don't really care about that. I just like results. And Strom is a very consistent scorer. He's got a great, great shot. He's got great vision and passing. Skating is, you know, decent enough. Uh, it doesn't hold him back, right? If you've got if you've got a guy who's just mobile enough to be useful, I think that that's fine. Uh, I'm not looking for Connor McDavid out there, but I think Strom would be a very cool secondary center to, to get behind like a Pierre-Luc Dubois or a Mark Shifley and really to fortify your top nine because Winnipeg's center depth, uh, it, it's just not that great in terms of high-end scoring ability. Um, this, you know, this past season with PLD and Shifley, it was a bit of a different story, but assuming that one of them probably isn't going to be here at the start of uh, next season, that means you really need to start looking for some options and you got to think outside the box. And I think Strom, you know, if he's not going to be signing with the, the Blackhawks, and to be honest, I don't really think that he has a big incentive to, then, you know, toss Chicago some kind of a pick, acquire his rights. Um, I, I think that there will be some competition here. I don't think it's going to be that cheap. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be like a second or a third rounder or something, maybe a bit more than that. Uh, but certainly, I, I have to think a lot of teams are looking at a guy who had 40, 48 points in 69 games and uh, is certainly a very... Um, shooting percentage driven kind of guy with a lot of playmaking ability. You know, it, it's not like you're getting the world's most elite first line player, but you're getting a really great second line complementary uh, center or winger. He's got that positional versatility. He's good on the power play and at even strength. I just feel like there's going to be no end to suitors for, you know, somebody looking uh, to get a, a pretty modest pay increase. I don't think he's going to be cheap. Um, I'm sure five and a half to six million is probably in the ballpark of his next deal. But uh, for what the Jets need, I think he is an ideal fit. In the same vein, I, I have a lot of time for Kevin Fiala, but um, Fiala, I would imagine 
he's going to be a, a quirky one to track because, you know, he had 85 points in 82 games. He was very clearly Minnesota's best player, uh, not not best player, but one of their best players this season and obviously one of their top scorers. Uh, but, you know, the reputation around him is always very mixed. It's kind of persisted ever since the the Nashville days that he's lazy, that he doesn't work hard enough, and that he disappears during cr- crucial moments. And I think um, his lack of scoring during the Minnesota series uh, in the postseason, it did not really sit well and it sit well with management. And like Bill Guerin kind of called him out, which was um, not a good look, if I'm being honest. Uh, Fiala is definitely falling out of favor with the Wild in that respect. Um, I, I really feel like it's crazy to just look at one playoff series and be upset at him. But hey, you know, teams want to shake things up all the time. And if the Jets could bring Fiala in, I think he'd be a wonderful fit out wide for this team. He's got that finishing talent that the Jets are just really lacking right now. And he also provides a lot of, you know, passing boosts. He's got great speed. And again, his shot within tight spaces is wonderful. So yeah, I I know that it is um, a little bit risky with his reputation, but I kind of bank on just his scoring prowess and record. And thus far, I think it really speaks for itself. So yeah, if the Jets want to try for either Strom or Fiala, I'm super down. Um, I feel like Fiala might end up staying with Minnesota. I just don't know how that's all going to work out. Uh, The comments from from, um, Garen weren't really glowing, I would say. So we'll keep an eye on that situation. We'll see who of these uh, RFAs are going to stick with their teams and also continue to talk about more RFAs over the next few weeks. Some of these guys, again, are going to be kind of protracted negotiations, and this might be the time where the Jets try and come in on some of these deals uh, to Chuck <laughs> in in some fantasy land. Maybe Winnipeg ends up with him. Who knows? Probably not this reality, though. Brock Besser, Fiala, Strom. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Something a little bit more modest than something within the price range. But I, I'll pause talking about that just because I could go on about RFAs all day. I do want to give you some quick updates about the, uh, the, the Western Conference Finals. Obviously, this is uh, the current series that I think not, not as many people um, are, are pleased with the outcomes right now. Uh, McDavid's Oilers are really struggling against the Avalanche, but you know there are some takeaways that I think are worth discussing, and we'll get to those in just a little bit. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Lockdown Winnipeg Jets. We are closing out tonight's episode with some quick thoughts on Edmonton versus Colorado. Uh, game two, uh, Edmonton basically got smoked by the Avs, and it's not really shocking. Colorado kind of had the run of play in the first game for at least part of it, and then Edmonton really started hitting back on counters and stuff, and it got to the point where it's just a really wide open, very fun game. Game two, very different story. The Avalanche basically stepped on the throttle and just never really let off. And Mike Smith got bounced, um, kind of got, kind of got riddled with uh, puck holes, unfortunately for him. But you know, some of the goals he conceded, I, I wouldn't say were his fault. Others, not so great. The Josh Manson slap shot, probably not something you want to let in. But like the Arturi Lekkinen tip, not a lot that you can do about that. Um, I just thought the Oilers looked really slow, which is not shocking. I think that their team is built to be a little bit more physical, a little bit heavier, and against a team like Colorado that's very fast hits you with a lot of north-south counters on rapid uh, force turnovers and stuff. I just don't really think the Oilers are super well uh, you know, equipped to handle that. McDavid's line got demolished. McDavid's line with Nurse was horrible. Uh, Darnell's pairing has just gotten torched. And I don't even know if it's really Nurse's fault necessarily. Um, I'm not sure who he's partnered with, but every time I see him like on a two-on-one or something, I just don't even know where his partner is. Uh, I feel like he's been victimized on a lot of rough reads that aren't necessarily entirely on him. And McDavid's line just hasn't been able to really assist defensively. They've been getting caved in. They're not forcing turnovers. They're not really blocking shots. And ultimately, they're just not even clearing the defensive zone with the puck. So uh, if, if McDavid is down in the defensive zone and not up the ice, Edmonton's screwed because they just don't really have the firepower elsewhere to afford wasted minutes with McDavid. Every time that he's on the ice, you've got to be getting some kind of positive offensive value out of him. If you're not, the series is going to be very short. And thus far, it's kind of trending that way. I think uh, Edmonton, we already knew, was going to be very vulnerable and not that good. But, you know, you still hope that the McDavid line would put up uh, a really nice showing. But unfortunately for them, they've just 
not really had an answer for Colorado's wave of depth and uh, really effective matchup players. So, yeah, tough series ahead. You know, it's it's going to be a, a bit of a slog clawing your way out of a 2 nothing deficit. But, you know, the Oilers have surprised us before. Maybe they've got one more. Uh, later today, uh, this is going to be like Friday morning. So later today, you'll be getting getting to watch um, the Rangers versus Lightning. After that first game in which the, the Rangers were definitely the stronger team, I'm curious to know if the Lightning have a big response. We'll see in just a little bit. But uh, for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you so much for listening to us. And again, choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Next week, we'll have more RFA talk, probably some additional prospect talk, and uh, thinking ahead towards next season lineups. Let's hope we also have a very trots announcement. Uh, a lot of us are getting real antsy. I know y'all are starting to get a little bit nervous, but uh, just sit tight and hope for the best. And again, <sighs> let's just hope the Jets make some really cool moves. Uh, but for tonight's episode, that is all you know. All the time that we have, I thought you should really be making your second listen locked on NHL. Locked on NHL covers the playoffs like no other. You'll be able to hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your favorite podcasts, same as where Locked On Winnipeg Jets is available. So be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right now. And as always, thank you for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go.